It's actually frightening how real this manga's nanotech is, especially considering they're using it as a giant Buddha robot to fight against Godzilla Jr. And that's not even including the bizarre exorcist Iron Man suit that's been hinted at in earlier chapters. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you need to get used to that because this is Dawn to Dawn. In Dawn to Dawn, there's ghosts, there's aliens, there's a whole mix of things, and fans are usually just led to be like, okay, yeah, sure. There's a lot of confusion in this series because there's a lot of pseudoscience. Like I said, there's aliens, there's psychic mediums, there's cryptids. There's a lot of stuff that's kind of backed up by science, but also not really. But like I said, there is some science in this manga, even if it's not completely scientific. And the science we do see is very real. One of the best examples of this real science is the nanoskin introduced later in the story. Now, nanoskin is given to us by this weird shrimp alien monster thing, so already you might be pretty skeptic. But let me explain how it works. The shrimp alien, his name is Peeny Weenie by the way, the shrimp alien tells us that nanoskin is shape memory alloy made of high density nano machines. Essentially the way it works is you have these building blocks made out of these nano machines, and by visualizing a certain image in your head, the nano machines react to that image in your head and then make that image. Now I know this sounds like magic, it sounds pretty broken, but like I said, this can be broken down into two real examples of science. First we can just bang out shape memory alloy. This one is exactly how it sounds. There are certain metals, alloys, that remember shapes. It remembers its original shape, so you can always put it back to that shape. Now, that was pretty easy. The more sophisticated part is the nano machines. You probably get very different ideas of nano machine based on your experience, so let me be very clear with what we're talking about. You might know them as nanobots or nanotech, but nano machines are actually the best way to think about it. They're exactly what they sound like. They're little machines that are the size of a nanometer. They're not necessarily little tiny robots, and in fact, if we're basing this off of modern science and what we're capable of right now, these little machines don't even have computers or AI. They're literally just little machines the size of a nanometer. So in Dawn to Dawn, when the characters are using nanoskin to build things, they're essentially just rearranging these nanomachines to build whatever they want. Now, when I say that, that probably brings up at least one or two questions. Some of you might be thinking, okay, so this manga is literally just Minecraft, right? Others might be thinking, okay, so this nanotech is literally just Iron Man, right? And in both cases, yeah, you're both kinda right. Now, like I said, I know it looks like magic, but this is real science. And like any real science, it has very real limitations. For example, just to make sure we're clear about this, because you might be confused on it, these nano machines are not controlled by AI. That's not how they're controlled in the real world, and that's definitely not how they're controlled in Dawn to Dawn. In Dawn to Dawn, you have to deliberately shape the nano skin, and if you just leave it there, it'll just retain its shape. So we can pretty much deduce that the nano skin isn't self thinking or self learning. As a result, it's implied that it has the same limitations as the nanotech we have now. For example, nano machines are the size of a nanometer and a nanometer is one billionth of a meter. Now, you might be thinking, if it's this small, it should be able to control atoms. Well, an atom is actually one-tenth of a nanometer. So while you might think a nanomachine can control an atom directly, the reality is that they're just way too big. You can manipulate atoms, you just can't rearrange them. It's essentially the difference between being able to shape sand however you want, and being able to turn something like beach sand into gold dust. This is essentially how nanometers are able to influence atoms. Now, there's also an analogy to Iron Man that I'm gonna make in a little bit, but I don't want to mention right now because it's gonna spoil what I'm working up to. So, we know how nanomachines work in Dawn to Dawn. You can't necessarily rearrange atoms, but you can take those nanomachines and rearrange them however you want. The only question we have left, naturally, is how the heck does that work? Well, let's just think about what the characters are literally doing. They're thinking of an image, and the nanomachines respond to them thinking of that image. So the nanomachines are essentially reacting to our brain waves. And yes, brain waves are really a thing. Our brain communicates using neurons, and neurons run on electricity. So really, brain waves are just electromagnetic waves. But I should mention that there's a spectrum to electromagnetic waves. 
For example, radio waves are another kind of electromagnetic wave, but radio waves have a much higher frequency than brain waves. And generally, when you're dealing with nanotech, you're going to be using waves of a higher frequency. For example, let's look at another kind of wave. Ultrasound machines don't use electromagnetic waves. Instead, they use sound waves. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's an ultrasound machine, so it's using high-frequency sound waves. And it uses those sound waves for imaging. In the context of nanomachines, you can actually control them by coating them in gold. That way, they react to ultrasound, and you can actually control them using the ultrasound. Now, sound, like electromagnetic waves, is just another form of energy. So the basic idea is that you're using energy waves to control nanomachines without batteries or AI. Now, I know we said we're working with brainwaves and Don to Don, but this is science fiction. So we can assume this is more futuristic nanotech, especially considering we're getting it from shrimp aliens. So nanoskin, like nanotech, is being controlled by the energy waves or electromagnetic waves in our brain. Thinking of certain images causes certain neurons in our brain to go off and the nanoskin reacts based on that particular arrangement of neurons. And that's how the characters are able to create different kinds of images with the nanoskin. And like I said in the beginning, this is basically Iron Man. At least in the movies anyway, I don't know about the comics. Now, interestingly enough, this isn't the only mention of brains and energy that we see in the story. And this is where we actually get into how the nanoskin can be used to fight ghosts and aliens. But before I get into that, I want to just give a quick shout out to this comment of the week from my last video. If you'd like me to share your comment in the next video, then just make sure to share your thoughts on Nanoskin down below. But back to what I was saying. This is where we need to introduce the character Momo. Momo is one of Don to Don's main characters. She's goofy, she's stubborn, and she really likes this actor named Ken Takakura. She also really likes Golgo 13. Kind of random, but also really in character for her. But most importantly, Momo has psychic powers. And right in time for Mob Psycho Season 3, I might add. Now, obviously psychic powers are pseudoscience. But in the context of Dawn to Dawn, we have a lot to work with. The big giveaway is that Momo's psychic powers are visible. Her powers are visible, because you can literally see these hands grabbing onto things. And when she's looking at someone's aura, it's a very visible thing. So when we're talking about something that's visible, that means it has to be somewhere on the spectrum of light. And when something is visible and it's on the spectrum of light, that means we're dealing with electromagnetic waves. And we already know that brain waves are a kind of electromagnetic wave. So the idea is that Momo psychic powers are just amplified brain waves. Which makes a lot of sense when you consider that Momo's powers, along with the other spirits around her, can pass through physical objects, like energy. But here's where things get interesting. We've already seen that normal people can turn nanoskin into crazy machines like the Buddha robot. In fact, what Momo was thinking of seems to have overpowered what everyone else was thinking of. And of course, we know that Momo has greater control over her brainwaves. So if Momo, as a psychic, has greater control over her brainwaves, then in theory, she should be capable of actually controlling Nanoskin with her powers. It's not really that much of a stretch. We've already seen her levitate and control baseball bats. And we also saw her grab and then bend a large pipe at a hot spring. So the idea is that Momo could put the skill into practice by controlling the Nanoskin like she does other objects. Well, for the most part, everyone else has to shape nanoskin by hand, Momo can pretty much do it with her brain. So Momo can basically cheat her way into being Iron Man and Magneto at the same time. Which is cool and all, but I'm sure you're probably thinking, how does this help fight spirits? Well, in Dawn to Dawn, spirits are usually killed using talismans. If you place a spirit in a binding circle with the talisman, then they kind of just set on fire. And if you place a talisman in a trap and trap the spirit in there, you actually bind the spirit to the trap. For example, later in the story, there's this weird human anatomy model that can walk and talk on its own. It can also break itself up into parts. So when there's a really strong spirit that they need to bind, the characters take that spirit and put it into the model and then trap it by putting a talisman in that model. So think about what Momo could do if she tried doing this with Nanoskin. She could take the nanoskin and make some kind of human model or Iron Maiden and trap the spirit in there with a talisman. 
she could basically seal away spirits whenever she wants. Or, you know what, let's go back to the Iron Man model. Momo could probably make some kind of nanoskin armor covered in talismans to fight yokai. Now, this all sounds really cool and kind of overpowered, but what's the downside? Well, like we said earlier, nanoskin doesn't have AI, and it doesn't have a battery. So, for example, let's say Momo runs low on energy or she just passes out. At that point, the nanoskin would be affected because she's literally consciously controlling it with her brain. But, like we also mentioned, nanoskin seems to retain its form even when you're not consciously controlling it. But even then, the nanoskin is only as powerful as Momo is. Now, that's the downside. The upside is that this is a major improvement to Momo's powers. Momo usually has to deliberately think about binding a spirit to be able to do that. With this, she can basically just bind it the one time and then leave it alone. And while normal people seem to have pretty good control over nanoskin, if you had better brain control like Momo, then this would actually allow for more sophisticated rearrangement of the nanoskin. To be clear, material behaves very differently once you take it down to the nano level. In some cases, if it's a solid, it can actually behave as a liquid. Kind of like how beach sand is obviously a solid, but if you put it into a pail and pour it out, it behaves like a liquid. Actually, wait a minute, sand is glass and glass is a liquid. Anyway, you get what I mean. The nanotech is usually just used like any other solid object. But with Momo, she could actually take the nanoskin and use it like a liquid, like sand. And on top of all that, this probably lets her do things she can't normally do with her powers. This is where I actually want to open the floor to you guys. What other powers do you think this gives Momo? Would Momo need some kind of special training to have the kind of control that we're talking about? And could Momo use the nanoskin to fight aliens the same way she could use it to fight ghosts? There's a lot of discussion to be had here, so make sure to drop your theories and comments down below. Hopefully you enjoyed my theory and what I had to say about it. Now, if you'd like another video like this one where I explore science and manga, then you have to check out my recent video on Gear 5th and One Piece. In that video, I explain how Luffy can actually make lightning even though he's made of rubber. You can find that video in the playlist linked right here. In any event, thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.